Will everybody in the audience please stand up? Quickly, I've only got six minutes. And I want everybody whose grandparents were farmers to stay standing, and the rest of you sit down. Everybody whose parents were farmers, stay standing, the rest of you sit down. Wow. Can all the wonderful farmers in the room stay standing and everyone else sit down? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shocking, but my point exactly. Agriculture today in Africa, we're looking at a declining farmer population and declining food production, increasing population growth and increasing food prices. What we need to do is turn this around. We've got the population. I see it as a huge opportunity. We've got to get more farmers farming to increase the population and to drive those food prices down. There are a lot of initiatives that are taking place trying to make this happen. There are a lot of services. We've got GMOs that we're, being, we're looking at. We've got uh, seeds that are drought-resistant seeds. But I think that the most important thing that we're missing is the farmer himself, educating the farmer. And I think that what we really need to do is to educate the farmer on the ground and encourage the youth to get involved in agriculture. And how are we going to do this? I think there's really only one key way, and that is by making agriculture sexy. In, in 2008, I was asked to help a group in Kibera turn this garbage site into a farm. And it sounds really daunting, but 105 days from the day we started, Victor Motola and his group were feeding not only their families, but the community at large. And it made me stop and think, what was it that made these youth take to agriculture like ducks to water? And if we could just capture that and broadcast it across the country or across the nation, across the planet, actually, we'd be winning. There's one thing that we do have across our African continent that we can broadcast information about agriculture. These youth picked it up because they had access to technology, access to information. And what they have in their hands today is access to mobile phones. And I came up with an idea to develop a system over mobile phone that I called iCal. It's an agricultural platform that delivers information and different services to farmers. I call iCal the pipe. It looks a little bit like this. On the one end, we've got the farmers. When we deliver services over the system for the farmers. One of them is a gestation calendar, where farmers actually sign their cows onto the telephone. So we have cows in the cloud. And we send information to the farmer about each specific cow, when it's due to come on heat, when to serve it, when to check to see if it is in fact pregnant, when to stop milking her. One farmer actually said, I cow tells me when to give my cow maternity leave. <laughs> One of the other services we have is access to experts, access to vets and AI, um, that's artificial insemination officers. A farmer simply sends the word vet to our, to our short code and then receives an SMS with all of the telephone numbers of the vets within his vicinity, all the artificial inseminators. Rob Burnett used the word yesterday and he said, in Africa, we are text savvy. And using SMS, that's where we really are. We're very text savvy. And we have a few other features, information, etc. What we found as we took ICAO to the market was other agricultural stakeholders became interested in using the pipe to deliver information to farmers and to use the information that was coming back to help them evaluate their projects going forward, to help them increase their efficiencies. The government, NGOs, you name it, everybody. We took ICAO to the market in June 2011. And after seven months, we did a survey. And what we found was actually quite extraordinary. The majority of our smallholder farmers in Kenya in the dairy sector have exotic animals. Each animal produces, on average, about six liters of milk, which is well below the potential of this animal. After seven months on iCow, farmers were producing an increased yield of up to two to three liters per animal. Most farmers have, on average, three animals, lactating animals. And in actuality, after seven months on iCow, they were producing enough milk, the equivalent of more milk than they would have had, the equivalent of having another cow without having had to invest in that animal, or the equivalent of two and a half dollars a day in terms of income, $78 a month for the cost of one dollar to be on iCow. So some of the other gains that we saw as well were quite interesting. Farmers claimed that they had um, reduced calf mortality, which meant that the farmer asset base was growing. 
and then the other things that are listed. Something interesting happened a couple of weeks ago. I was reading a thread on one of our farmer Facebook、um, sites, and some of the farmers were complaining about the really critical problem we have across the country with our maize failure. Some of the other farmers, a couple of days later, were talking about having been able to access disease-free seed from one of our research centres. What was really amazing is we took that information of the research centre and sent it across iCow to 11,000 farmers, and within hours the research centre was inundated with calls. And within three days, using M-Pesa, farmers were buying seed, and the seed stocks were out of stock. And it made me start thinking about the cloud. And made me start thinking about how we can actually use different technologies to improve agriculture, making it sexy for the youth, bringing more youth into agriculture. And one last question: How many of you are farmers on Farmville? Be honest, honest, hands up. How many of you have used Farmville? I don't believe it. <laughs> there are 85 million farmers on Farmville. Farmers who are out there farming virtually. And I hope that one day in the near future we'll be able to harness. All those potential farmers and make them work together to increase global food security. Thank you. Thank you.